Hello and welcome to episode three of Student Loan Television. My name is Heath Hollihan from Student Loan Insider. And we're going to go over three things today. We're going to go over our student loan in the news. We're going to look at a blog post to try to help you out about taxes. And we're going to go ahead and look at one of the bundles and see how I can help you. So when it comes to student loans, Mark Cuban has been far from um, not having an opinion. He has talked about the student loan bubble that he believes is going to happen. He's talking about how to fix it in terms of saying that they should be capping. The, the bubble is going to ex exist if he said that they cap the amount of debt they can have, and then people are going to obviously have it ex explode. Um, and, but he said that they should be capping the amount of private loans too. And what I've not seen him say, but it seemed as though he is going towards is then what should ultimately happen is that colleges should have the amount that they can charge capped, which are then because colleges do have really inflated costs in terms of administration and things like that. What my personal opinion is before we go into the other news story is that a freshman should know right up front how much they'll be paying. So you can raise it every year for every freshman class, but let's say your tuition's 20000 you want to raise it 500 every year. We well, do 20000 um, 20,500, which is 4,500, 21, which is 61,5, uh, 62. It would be like $82,000, give or take 83, I think. Um, then I'm sorry, I was doing math there in my head, but let's see, 20, 40, 50, 500, 1,000, 1,500, and two is 1,500, three, five, so it should be 85,000. Um, and you'd know right up front exactly what you would be borrowing against and kind of can make a plan. And of course, there's financial aid and all of that. Um, and then the next year, instead of starting at 20000 they might start at 21000 and then go up 500 every year for that class. But at least you would know ahead of time. And that's what I believe should happen. But either way, the other thought process that people are looking at is saying they want to forgive the $1 trillion student debt that Mark Cuban now says this is the worst thing we can do. The reason why is that it would keep the bubble to keep expanding because he thinks it's actually the colleges that are having the problems. Um, as he says in the article here, I'm reading from Business Insider, forgiving the debt is the worst thing you can do because all it does is bail out universities. Um, when forgiveness would just show that Uncle Sam would forgive their debts, according to Cuban, and encourage students to keep taking out big loans to pay hefty tuition instead of going against and finding a more responsible school or making the schools re re uh, rein in their spending. So that's actually a very interesting thing to look at. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do today is look at actually one of my blog posts here, something that would help you out, especially this time of year with tax time, five things you may not know about your loans and taxes. So thing number one is... Uh, that student loan services only report and send you forms for six hundred dollars or more when you claim everything. So if you paid six hundred or more, I mean the loans forgiven will report to the IRS. Or if it's less than six hundred in either case, um, whether it's student loan interest or student loan um forgiveness that you have to pay taxes on, I'm um, not forgiveness cancellation, then. Um, you only get a form for 600 or more, but all of it's reported to the IRS, so it would be best to claim all of it. Um, with many loan forgiveness programs, your amount, your forgiveness amount is taxable, so income-driven plans, death, disability, all cancel, but teacher loan forgiveness or public service loan forgiveness is not taxable. Um, only the Department of Education can seize your taxes as three, not your servicer, so as long as your regular servicer has it, you're fine. They cannot garnish tax returns or wages. But if you do default and fall behind, they can transfer it to another group. Um, default resolution group is one of the options. And then you can have negative repercussions at that point, such as default garnishments and a whole other thing you don't want to come across. Uh, there's three different forms you tend to get. That's what four is. 1098T comes from your school. 1098E and 1099C comes from your servicer. The 1098T is for reporting educational expenses. 
Uh, your servicer would not be able to get you this form, so calling them and asking would not be effective in that way. Um, but then 1098E is eligible interest, and 1099C is canceled debt, which we talked about above. And you can only claim interest paid, not interest accrued, and it can't be paid by a third party. So just because you accrued $1,000 in interest for that year, if you didn't pay anything, it doesn't count. It has to be with the amount of interest that you paid. And if it's paid by a third party, such as an AmeriCorps, you cannot claim it on your taxes. So that's kind of going over some, some basic student loan information there for taxes. Now, quickly, I just want to kind of end and show you the how to the how to complete this looks like the forbearance is one so what to do for your application for success so i have different ways to to help you and if you're not sure how you can always send me an email or give me a call the information is also in the contact information but if you're looking for the consolidation only this bundle includes oh that's not it i apologize this is the can't afford your payment bundle my i am sorry so if you can't afford your current payment you get the deferment forbearance guide a step-by-step -step guide on applying for the income plan and what and a guide of what payment plan is right for you plus unlimited access to me and it's only 39 dollars so you can certainly do that. Now, the what income plan is payment plans right for you? It goes over different income plans, not based on plans not based on your income, plans based on your income. If you have private loans, Perkins loans, Parent Plus loans, different things that may work out best for you. Um, you can also have the so how to complete an income plan, which there's a step-by-step -step guide here where I show you with screenshots how to complete it. You'll be emailed all of this once you actually create the purchase. This gives you everything there. And because there are deferments and forbearances that may benefit you during this time, there's a deferment and forbearance guide that helps you see what forbearances and deferments you may qualify for, where to send them, and how to fill out every form on an actual copy of the form. So that kind of gives you a general idea of how I can help you there. There's other ways that I can help you. You can always go to studentloaninside.org forward slash pricing. You can, um, and you, always you can contact me with anything you need. The best way to contact me, besides one of the con send me an email, this will send it to studentloaninsider at gmail.com, which is the best way to go. You can uh, phone me, which is here. We can do social um, which is facebook.com slash studentloaninsider, at stdntln insider, uh, Google Plus to search my name, Heath Holohan, or always on YouTube at Student Loan Insider. So hopefully these will help you today. And if you ever have anything you need, just give me a holler. And again, this is uh, Heath Holohan from Student Loan Insider. This was Student Loan Television, Episode 3, and I do hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much.